Welcome to the tutorial importing a model. In this tutorial I'm going to show you the preliminary steps needed to break down a cutout character. But before we begin I wanted to refresh everybody's memory about the keyboard shortcut set that we're using. So we're using the Adobe Flash keyboard shortcut set and what that means is that all the keyboard shortcuts that I use are similar if not exactly the same shortcuts that you would use if you were using Flash. Um, and to change your keyboard shortcut preferences, you would go to Animate Pro, Preferences, or in Windows, Edit Preferences. And then under the first tab, Shortcuts, you could select Adobe Flash from the drop-down menu here. So you might have your set to Toon Boom Animate by default. Um, I know when you first install the software, you're given the choice. Some people can't decide right away which set they want to use and often they end up uh, selecting uh, the animate keyboard shortcut set by default. So if you do this here and you say OK, um, you should have the same keyboard shortcuts that I use and it'll be easier for you to follow along with the tutorials. So to begin, um, I took the Karate Rabbit from, I believe, the Catherine Content tutorial and I finished coloring the three views that I had, the front, three-quarter profile, and profile views, and then I actually put them all in the same cell, uh, the same drawing uh, layer. And I think these two are actually blank now, so I can just get rid of those. So they're lined up like this. And I did this because I want to create um, a template for the Karate Rabbit so that I can bring it into a different scene, I actually create its own scene. And this is very typical um, in the industry that a character will have its own scene with all its different parts and all its different views. And um, just to reiterate, generally when you create a cutout character, you have two extra views that are not shown here, and that would be the three-quarter profile back, so you'd see the back of the rabbit head, um, and also a full back, which would be the opposite of the front view. But I just have the three views here um, for simplicity's sake. So I'm going to go to the library, and I'm going to right-click on the Animate Pro library and select the menu item, Right to Modify. And then I'm going to uh, right-click again and say New Folder. So then if I click on the little gray arrow beside uh, the Animate Pro library, it uh, uncollapses the library and I can see the new folder that I've created. And then I'm going to right-click one more time and say Rename Folder. And I'm going to rename this Karate Rabbit and hit enter. And now I'm going to take my rabbit color from the left side of the timeline view and drag and drop it to the right side of the library view. And now I'm given the opportunity to rename my template and I'm going to rename it Karate Rabbit and say OK. So now I'm going to create a new scene, and I'm going to do this by clicking on the Create New Scene button. And I'm going to rename my project, my new project that I'd like to create, Karate Rabbit. And I can browse if I want for a place to save it. Um, I think this is where I'd like to save it. And once again, you can change any of your scene settings, but I'm going to leave mine uh, as is. And yes, I'm going to save what I did in this scene. So now we're in our new scene, Karate Rabbit. And I'm going to go back to the library. And this time I don't have to right click on it and um, ask to have the rights to modify it because I'm not going to modify anything. I'm just going to take things from the library. Um, so I'm going to click on my Karate Rabbit template and I'm going to drag and drop it either into the left side of the timeline or directly into the camera view. And so now I have um, my template laid out. So this is not exactly what we want. We would like to see our rabbit, the three views, on three separate layers, but in the same column in the timeline, and also be overlapping in the camera view. So I'd actually like them lined up so they're one on top of the other. So to do this, I'm going to create three new layers. I'm going to click on the Add Drawing Layer three times. And then I'm going to rename them accordingly by double-clicking into the field. I'm going to call this one rabbit underscore front. This is going to be rabbit 
three. Uh, three quarters is often denoted by a three and a Q instead of uh, a three and a four, one beside each other. And rabbit profile, like this. So there are a few things that we can use to help us align the rabbit correctly. And the first one is the drawing grid. And you can access the drawing grid in several ways. Uh, the first one being is if you go to the view menu and select grid. All right, so you have to actually click in the camera view and make sure that this red line, the focus, is around the camera view. And then you can go to view, grid, show grid. Or you could go to windows, toolbars, and bring up the camera view toolbar. And as you can see, the grid icon is the first depressed icon in the, uh, in the toolbar row. So now I'm going to click on the rabbit color layer and select the first rabbit. Um, I know for a fact that I have all of his parts selected because I grouped him earlier um, before I created the template uh, by using the keyboard shortcut command G on Mac or Control G in Windows. So then I can use the keyboard shortcut Command C for copy or Control C for copy in Windows and then click on the rabbit front layer and use the keyboard shortcut Command V. So now he exists in both layers. And I'm going to do the same for the three quarter view. and for the profile view. So this way I have a safety. I have the rabbit color with the three views still there. Um, in fact, I could probably delete it because I actually have it as a template in the library. So there's no worry if I screw up. I always have a backup. So I'm actually going to do that now. I'm going to select the rabbit color and delete it and say OK. So now I have um, my three rabbits in three separate views, but in the same column. So the next step is to move them to the center so that they're all aligned. So our rabbit three-quarter view is already centrally aligned. Let me actually zoom in just in case you can't see that. With the uh, center line of the grid, I'm just going to knock it over a few notches so that it's perfectly aligned like that. So that's our first indication and a good way to line up all the drawings is by matching the central white square of the boundary box. So now I'm going to take the rabbit front and do the same thing. I can pretty much match up the heels of the feet because they seem to be the most aligned. And I'm going to do the same for the profile view now. I'm going to bring you over, you're pretty much here, and we'll have the leg actually be between the two legs of all the other views. So now all my rabbits are stacked one on top of the other, and you'll see why I did this in the following tutorial. Um, when it comes to breakdown, it's really essential to have them all lined up like this. So now we're going to take a little bit of a break from the preliminary setup and talk a little bit more about animation theory. So I'm only developing one character here. But something to consider when you're creating an entire animation with multiple characters and multiple scenes and props and things like that is how your characters are going to fit together. Because if they're all drawn separately uh, and often by different people, there has to be a certain consistency. And not just in the look, but also in the size. Um, and let me give you an example that I have, a drawn example. So when we're looking at size relationships between characters, it's often good to do something called a lineup. Um, and that's a lineup of all of your characters in the same scene, particularly on the same drawing. So like what I did with the rabbit in the rabbit template. In the rabbit template here, I had all three of my rabbits together in the same cell of the same drawing. So when we look at a character lineup like this, the benefit of doing that is not only having characters of different uh, heights and volumes, so you have a bit of a variety, but also seeing how they, they measure up. You might have a very tiny hero and a gigantic villain. You know, you want to see uh, that proportion because 
only the concept artists, the character creators, would know what the relationship is supposed to be if they are laid out like this. Because if you're given the bad guy and he's the same size as the hero, but in the creator's mind, their size difference is enormous. Well, if it's not done in a lineup where they're beside each other, how is anyone going to know that? How is anyone going to know how much smaller their hero is than the villain? And so the best thing to do is, after you've drawn all your characters, is to use the field grid not only to shrink them and make sure that they are within the field grid, but also to line them up so that whenever you hand this off, this drawing off to an animator, the posing layout artist, the, the person who does scene setup, they can tell what the characters are supposed to look like in relationship to one another. The second issue that you might come across um, when you're drawing characters is that you draw them uh, maybe quite large, extending beyond this 12 by 12 field grid, and then you shrink them down. Well, what's going to happen is something that looks like this. the lines of your actual character are going to get much thinner. And that's the problem of not creating them at the proper size. And so if you created one character using this brush at this height, and another character, say, using the same brush at this height, and then you shrank this character down, well then, one of the characters is going to have thin lines, and the other one's going to have thick lines, even though they were created with the same brush, and they're now the same height. And that's going to look really inconsistent when you make your animation. So the two things to be really aware of when you're creating an animation, and unfortunately due to time constraints I can't create a whole character set to show you this, but really keep it and bear it in mind when you're creating your own animation. So I've already given you two tips on how to keep your characters in um, check and in proportion. The first being the field grid and the second one being the lineup. Um, actually one thing I forgot to mention about the lineup is you can create it not only with characters but also with props and in fact you can give that drawing with the layout of all your characters and props to the prop artist or you can give just a cutout of the hand at its actual size from that lineup to the prop artist and they can measure uh, like say an apple for example to the size of the hand. So the third tip that we have is actually um, creating a brush. A brush that you can use again and again so that the thickness and consistency of your line is always the same. And you'd have to refer back to the actual tutorial where we show you how to create a brush. I uh, see here I have a rabbit brush already created, but that's just to ensure that again and again when I create my characters in this field grid so that they're correct proportion to each other, using these increments as well as the same brush line, you're, you're sure to have characters of the right size. Um, so I think that's pretty much it for the tutorial importing a model. Stay tuned for the next tutorial studying the model.